Do you worry about the America first agenda that we've heard from President Trump? Will it hurt Indonesia? Well, first, uh, I think globally we have to recognize that the openness and the global trade is actually helping a lot of countries to really get the, what you call it, shared prosperity and reducing poverty. Asia is actually one of the region that has been successfully reduced the poverty and improve the well-being of many million, or even in this case, million of million people, 100 million people to escape from the poverty. And that's because of the trade openness and the investment across country in the yeah. world. So the current protectionism uh, language is definitely is going to create a concern whether globally there will be a setback of all being uh, progress being made in the past three decades. For Asia especially and Indonesia, we are a country which is also rely on what you call it the global market in order for us to be able to move from the low income to become middle or even higher income country. And managing and maintaining this openness is very important. That's why trade can become a very powerful of improving prosperity for all. So this is not a zero-sum game. For Indonesia especially also, because we are exporting quite a lot in the region, yeah. not only in the United States, in the ASEAN region, and diversify even in India, that's mean that we have to be able to come up with a new market development uh, destination. Uh, uh, Minister, Indonesia is also one of the countries that was under investigation by the U.S. for running a large trade surplus with the U.S. Have you had any discussion about this with U.S. authorities? Well, when we discussed last time uh, with uh, Secretary Mnuchin about what does it mean to have a fair trade in this case, I think at that time they tried to define what does it mean to have a fair trade between country and the United States seems like now having an approach more bilateral rather than using a multilateral institution like WTO. I think it will be very useful for many countries in the world because after all US is the largest economy in the world. When they are saying that American uh, uh, first doesn't mean that America alone and when they are going to push this fair trade, what does it mean in defining the fair trade between country so that it will create both prosperity for us but also for the rest of the world but, but minister do, do you worry that actually mm -hmm. there's unfair targeting by the u.s administration and do you believe your country will continue being targeted by the u.s indonesia have a surplus uh, with the united states but i think they actually have a mutually benefiting between Indonesia and United States. We are not on the top list in this case, but we are also enjoying a surplus. I think that is within the interest of United States to see Indonesia as the largest Southeast Asia country because this is also a market for many of the U.S. products. We are building a lot of infrastructure now in Indonesia, railway, toll road, power sector, and that is usually among the traditional strongest United States in order for them to be able to trade or to expand their own both investment as well as selling their product. Capital good is usually the biggest need for many emerging countries for them to be able mm -hmm. to move forward. And U.S. is the largest in this case as the most strongest in order for them to be able to sell their product. So for them to see the rest of the world, especially emerging countries, to move forward, to become more prosper, is good for the United States. Minister, good to see you again. Uh, I, I believe I saw you at the at World um, Bank here uh, uh, a bit ago. There are, whether 17,000 or 18,000 islands, you've got 270 million people, you got 127 active volcanoes, and you've only got one U.S. president. He says, make America great again. Please identify for our global audience how you're going to make Indonesia great again. How do you bring Indonesia forward given the absolutely fractious geography and culture? Well, Indonesia is a big country, as you mentioned, Tom. And uh, at, uh, currently, the president's really focusing on how we are going to make Indonesia to become an established middle income going to the high income country. And that means we have to invest in the uh, human capital and that's why our spending on uh, education and health and social protection is very important because sharing prosperity and growing middle class will make right. Indonesia well, to become a good a good middle income country and we also invest in infrastructure you mentioned about thousand island that we are having yes and they need to be connected to become one single market but also not only connected right. within but also mm. with the region but within the so that's why we need to have a lot of uh, governance and uh, reform 
and this is the focus of the president now and we are the cabinet is really busy in really making sure right. that the deeper reform is going to be delivered within the deeper reform are we going to see a new indonesian capitalism that truly feeds a growing middle class that's been the line for years but you got to get there what is going to be the catalyst to really drive a burgeoning middle class in indonesia well, first, of course, we have to maintain a better, higher growth, which is inclusive. Because if you can easily, for Indonesia as a big country with commodity, natural resource, big population, you can easily make a higher growth, but it's not going to be shared by most of the population. That's why when we talk about the higher, more inclusive, better quality growth, we have to make sure that the people can participate and enjoy. That's why I said earlier, human capital investment is very important. We are not only allocating 20% of our budget to the education, but we are more concerned about quality of the process of education to produce a good skill human capital in Indonesia. We also make sure that the infrastructure is going to connect especially the remote island in Indonesia so that it is not only Jakarta or Java Island who actually enjoy the growth. And this is exactly what now the government is doing. The middle class can only actually being bigger when the country is stable and the growth is inclusive enough. And this is exactly the focus of the government now, making sure that the growth is not going to be enjoyed by the top 5% or top 1%. Uh, Minister, do you worry that the tightening by the Federal Reserve will actually affect Indonesia this year? In 2013, there was quite a, a big taper tantrum that actually affected your currency. Yes. 2013, was taper tantrum. Many countries were not prepared, as well as the Federal Reserve in communicating the policy direction was also a bit surprise for the rest of the world. 2017, in fact, when the Federal Reserve has already increased their interest rate, Indonesia exchange rate is keep stable. We actually, in this case, is among the most stable currency. When the Federal Reserve really increasing, not only announcing, mm -hmm. but really increasing. This year, we also have already seen that the signal that for them to strength, to increase their interest rate. Of course, Indonesia has much stronger uh, fundamental. We have the largest reserve now, more than 130 billion. We have a uh, current account deficit, which is still below 2%. But the growth rate above 5% right. <clears throat> with a much better middle class is going to be, be a very good foundation for us to make sure right. that the stability on the fiscal side, as well as the monetary side, is going to create a better environment for us to grow further. Minister, let me bring up a chart that I'm sure you know. This is, of course, dollar against Indonesia, and it shows folks the agony of 1998 when Indonesia really was challenged. And here is the massive triumph of stability for the government of Indonesia. But we see over the last few years a new weakening in IDR, Minister. How do you respond to Mr. Mnuchin's new policy of maybe a weak dollar or eventually a U.S. strong uh, dollar. That's got to be harmful to you, right? Well, first, Indonesia since 97 uh, financial crisis, we are adopting a flexible exchange rate, meaning that the rupiah is reflecting the fundamental of Indonesia economy versus the rest of the world. Of course, in this case, U.S. Uh, as the uh, currency of the world have a certain big weight in terms of the rupiah uh, currency. But the rupiah is serving well in order for us to be able to create the first shock, shock absorber because the flexibility will create making sure that we are going to be able to create more what you call it improvement in the competi competitiveness but without really tinkering or managing the movement that's why why now the indonesian uh, policy maker focusing more on a fundamental this is in order for us to be able to present to the world what is the comparative advantage of our economy. This is the, the economy with the large population, with the commodity base, which is now also diversifying more on, for example, like tourism, as well as manufacturing sector. So we are diversifying away from what we call it commodity dependent economy. And that is going to be able to create more resilience when the United States, with their authority, is going to adopt any policy. Certainly, we expect that this is going to be a policy that is not only going to serve U.S. 
only but serve the the rest of the world because us is definitely also depend on the rest of the world as the rest of the world also depend on the us this is mutual relationship in which we need to maintain a positive constructive constructive policy relationship. Um, uh, Minister, Indonesia holds local elections this year. It will hold mm -hmm. a presidential election next year. A lot of people are talking about you standing as a candidate for deputy president. Have you been approached by anyone? We are focusing more on the reform now. And I think the reform is really a very important for the Indonesian people. That is very important job and program. As a finance minister, I've really committed to make sure that the Indonesia economy is going to be stronger and more stable for the good of the Indonesian people.